Hi, and welcome to Physics Made Easy. In this episode, we will look at a question from subscriber Faisal Zia. Why is the voltage the same in every resistor when these are set in a parallel combination? Thank you for your question, Faisal. First, I will answer it in an informal manner, and then I will answer it in a more formal manner by using the second law of Kirchhoff, which is just an expression of the laws of conservation of energy applied to an electric circuit. Let's draw a battery with an EMF epsilon of 9 volts. This EMF is a difference of potential, meaning that you have an electric potential here 9 volts larger than an electric potential there. If we fix the electric potential there at 0 volt as a reference, we will therefore have 9 volts on this plate. 9 volts, what does it mean? It means that one coulomb of charge located on this plate will hold 9 joules of energy. If I connect this plate to a conducting cable, the charges will be able to move freely in the cable without losing energy. Yes, it's made of a conducting material. Therefore, each coulomb of charge will still hold 9 joules wherever it's positioned in the cable. So you would have 9 volts here, 9 volts there, and 9 volts there. You could imagine something similar on the other side, where one coulomb of charge holds zero joules wherever it is on the cable here. So you also have zero volts there. We say that the cables are equipotentials. Okay, between these two points, let's draw now a resistor. What do you notice? Is that you have a 9 volts potential here and a 0 volt potential there meaning there is a potential drop across a resistor of 9 volts. 0 minus 9 is minus 9. So it's 9 volts, but with the arrow on the other side to show that you're losing the energy. So basically, the battery is giving 9 joules for every coulomb that passes through it, and the resistor loses 9 joules for every coulomb that passes through it. Conservation of energy. OK, let's now connect another resistor with R2, in parallel with the first one. These cables are equipotentials. They are connecting material, so you also have 9 volts there, and also 0 volts there. And what do you notice? Is that the potential difference is 9 volts across this resistor also. So resistors in parallel will always have the same potential drop across them. The way I explained why two resistors in parallel have the same potential drop, here was a little bit informal. Let's do it in a more formal way now. Again, let's draw a battery of EMF epsilon volts, meaning that I would have zero volts here and epsilon volts here. Every coulomb of charge placed on this plate will hold epsilon joules. Let's connect this to a resistor. I shoot to two resistors in series, R1 and R2. The battery will provide epsilon joules for each coulomb that passes through the battery. Here, you will have a potential drop V1 and a potential drop V2, meaning that each coulomb of charges will lose V1 joules in this resistor and V2 joules in this one. Because of conservation of energy, the number of joules provided per coulomb by the battery needs to equate the number of joules lost in the resistors for each coulomb. That means that epsilon needs to be equal to V1 plus V2. This is the second law of Kirchhoff. The sum of the EMFs in a circuit loop is equal to the sum of the potential drops. A way to make it easier to view is to use what we call the loop law, which is derived from this. If I take a point A, what is the potential difference between A and A? <laughs> Zero, right? But we can imagine traveling from A with an initial electric potential, VI. We travel along it and we come back. So a final potential, VF. We see that the difference between these two potentials will be zero. It's the same point. So what we can do is do the travel. We start from A. 
And then we travel and we say, oh, I've got an increase of epsilon joules per coulomb in the battery. Then I lose V1 joules per coulomb in the resistor and V2 joules per coulomb in the second resistor. And when I come back to A, well, the potential difference between initial and final is zero, so I got zero. And again, I see here the second law of Kirchhoff appearing. Okay, so now let's put a resistor in parallel here, put R2 there, and apply the loop law. Well, in R2, you'll have a potential drop V2. Let's start from A. So we've got epsilon and travel along a loop. Here I've got a potential drop, so minus V2. And I'm back at A, zero. Let's do it also for this one. Epsilon minus V1. And I'm back at A, zero. So it means epsilon equals V2 and epsilon equals V1. So V1 equals V2. We can use another loop. We could use this loop, for example. Let me change color. Yeah, let's lose this loop. We start from this point and we go around. V2 minus V1 equals zero. So V2 equals V1. I could put a third resistor if I wanted to. And I would also find that epsilon minus V3 equals zero. So V3 would be equal to V2 and V1. Or I could use this loop, V3 minus V2 equals zero. So V2 equals V3, which is also equal to V1. Resistors in parallel have the same potential drop across them. Voila, I hope this helps you understand why two resistors in parallel exhibit the same potential drop. Don't hesitate to post more high school physics questions in the comments. I will try to answer them directly, and I'll pick some to be answered with the video, like this. Was this video useful to you? Yeah? So smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. This really helps the channel and encourages me to make new videos. But for now, we're done. So I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.